Well, they talk about Wembley weather, and this is it. Liverpool's 21st appearance in this famous old stadium in 15 seasons. They've won the FA Cup three times. And, of course, the first FA Cup final appearance of Wimbledon. being led out by Adrian Titchen of the FA. Bobby Gould on the right. Applauding the Wimbledon and the Liverpool fans. Big Dave Besant, the Wimbledon goalkeeper, the first goalkeeper ever to captain an FA Cup final side. John Fashionu, Vinnie Jones is there, the substitute Laurie Cunningham. It's a glorious afternoon for a side that just 11 years ago wasn't even in the Football League. And as recently as 1983, Wimbledon were playing in the fourth division. It really is storybook stuff, and now facing a side who regard Wimbledon, or rather Wembley, as their second home. A cheery character, Dave Besant, who lives, well, a Dave Besant goal kick from the stadium, and can see the stadium, he says, from his bedroom window. But I wonder if in his professional career he ever thought actually he'd be playing here in a cup final. Well, that day has dawned. Bright and clear. Liverpool in that famous red strip of theirs. The hottest favourites in years. At four to one on. There hasn't been a hotter favourite since Leeds played Sunderland back here in 1973. Then Sunderland upset the odds and won. Her Royal Highness, the Princess of Wales. There's Mr. Burke Minichip, the chairman of the Football Association on the right. But one figure missing today, Ted Croker, the General Secretary of the FA, who's unwell in hospital at the moment. He retires later this year. It's sad that Ted misses his last final in office, but we wish him a really speedy recovery. And now the national anthem. First to be presented, Liverpool, today seeking to become the first club ever to do the double of League and Cup twice. A man always with a word and a joke, the Liverpool goalkeeper Bruce Grobelaar and Steve Nicholl. Gary Ablett in his first full season, finding a place at Wembley, only 22 years old, the left-back. Craig Johnston, one of the substitutes. The man with the headband, of course, with six stitches, which he's explaining to Her Royal Highness. <laughs> they both got them. Uh, Gary Gillespie and Nigel Spackman had a terrible clash of heads uh, playing against Luton. And he's a really cheery character, Nigel Spackman, the former Bournemouth and Chelsea player. And uh, <laughs> everything's so relaxed. Little Ray Houghton, who's added a certain dimension to... Liverpool's midfield since he arrived from Oxford United. Steve McMahon, who might well have a lot to say for England in the European Championships in West Germany this summer. John Aldridge, who had the unenviable task of taking over from Ian Rush, but has done it magnificently. John Barnes. It's 
rare to see a cup final side as relaxed as this. Ian Mulby and Peter Beardsley. The Big Dane having a word here now, Ian Mulby with Her Royal Highness. And of course, the one and only Kenny Dalglish. What a job he's done. And Merseyside are proud of him. A fabulous achievement. Now the turn of Wimbledon. Big Dave Besant. Biggest man on the field at six foot four. Smashing moment for them, really. And, uh, and really, Ian St. John, every small club in the land must be saying, well, they did it. Uh, maybe we could do it as well. But 11 years ago, they weren't even in the league. Well, why not? I mean, it is a fairy tale story. Uh, and I'm sure Dave sitting beside us here I must be looking at it and thinking, you know, it's marvellous for all these young lads that he's seen grow up in the Wimbledon side. Yeah, Dave Bassett, former manager of Wimbledon, your thoughts now as you look at these pictures? Well, they're, they're unbelievable, really. Uh, it must be marvellous for the players because uh, uh, none of us two years ago would have ever thought we could get to Wembley. And so it's tremendous. I feel for Dave Bassett and Alan Court because uh, really they were fourth division players and they've come through everything. They look reasonably relaxed as well. That's the thing about that, your ex-team. They're, they're always very confident, aren't they? Look at Pocky Bunch. That's right. I, they had a few inexperiences when we was in the second division when we went to places like Manchester City and froze. And even last year in the quarter-final we froze. But uh, I think they learned a lot from that when they won at Liverpool last year and Manchester United and they've had some good results this year. So I think they'll enjoy today. The referee today is Brian Hill from Kettering. 40 years old, who will be one of uh, the linesmen in the European Championships in West Germany. In a delightful, delicate shade of pink. And yourself looking very relaxed. I don't think the Royal Highness is a great football fan, but let's hope there's a treat in store for us, for her, and for all of you watching this afternoon. Right, let's take the first check on the teams. Let's start with Liverpool with the inimitable Bruce Grobelar in goal. In the back four, Gary Gillespie, as we've seen, recovered from the crack on the head against Luton in midweek. Six stitches in the wound. Uh, they may well need his heading ability against the likes of Fashionu and Cork. Similarly, Nigel Spackman has recovered from that same clash of heads, also with six stitches. Uh, and in that midfield area, the role of Steve McMahon against Vinnie Jones, I suppose, will be crucial too. And then up front, Peter Beardsley and John Aldridge, 47 goals between them, but both playing in their first FA Cup final. Well, Wimbledon, a big figure of uh, Dave Besant, the skipper in goal. And then Clive Goodyear at right back, an amazing recovery he's made from a hairline fracture of a leg against Spurs in March, now back to face John Barnes. And if indeed they play 4-2-4, Sanchez and Vinnie Jones will be there. They'll be the men asked to do a lot of work and running. And a key figure up front could also be one of the smallest, five foot six inches, Dennis Wise. I've got a hunch they might well play him down the right-hand side to get after Gary Ablett and to help out uh, holding John Barnes with Alan Court playing away on the left. But we shall see. Terry Gibson, of course, passed a fitness test this morning. Big John Fashionu up there as well. Such a character, Fashionu, and a, a frightening fellow for defences, really. And a good record this season with uh, 21 goals. Started at Norwich, had a lone spell at Crystal Palace where he played only one game. Uh, Dave Bassett bought him from uh, Millwall for about 120,000 quid, I think it was. And, well, he's proved a fantastic investment. Steve Nicholl, one of uh, three survivors only of the Liverpool side that won the double here two years ago. Uh, Bruce Grobbler and Alan Hansen are the others. I don't know if we can pan down a little bit, but they say he wears the biggest boots of all, size 12. A mine of pretty useless information this afternoon, Ian. <laughs> no, it has got huge plates of meat. You're right enough. Well, the referee just about to toss up. 
Brian Hill of Kettering, tossing up actually with a 1961 old penny that she says he used uh, when he refereed his first match back in 1965. He's got a reputation of being a referee who does like the game to move around a bit. George Tyson and Mike Pierce are his two uh, linesmen this afternoon. I think it's ironic, Brian, that uh, Brian Hill's first game was refereeing Wimbledon at Brentford. Is that so? When we first came in the league. Unfortunately, I was playing and we lost 4-1. <laughs> I hope that's not an omen. <laughs> well, let's uh, see. He wasn't too bad last week at Huddersfield for Sheffield United. You had a good win there, of course. You've got to play off tomorrow, haven't you, at Bristol City? For Sheffield United. Well, here's Brian Hill. So Liverpool then, we've got this 107th final underway. And they will be attacking the goal to our right. See, Dennis Wise is lined up on the right, as you said, Brian. Indeed, Wise is up there. He'll have a go at Gary Ablett, the Wimbledon field. They might find a way through. And he'll certainly be helping out Clive Goodyear to hold John Barnes. And Liverpool get us underway. Attacking the goal to our right. Andy Thorne looking around to make sure Dave Besant was there. But he noticed that Aldridge was too close. It's not a time for mistakes early on. They need time just to settle a little bit. Beardsley. Nickel. Houghton. It's time it's a Wimbledon throw. They've been training all week, Wimbledon. They got in touch with the Wembley groundsman, found out the exact dimensions of the Wembley pitch, and have been playing for that because it is a very big pitch. So all their training has been geared along that. A jump and a winner in the air for John Fashionu. But Steve Nicholl giving uh, an early touch there to Bruce Grobelar. his 10th Wembley appearance since the first in 1982. Barnes versus Goodyear, and you notice there that Barnes was sandwiched there by Goodyear and Wise, as we thought he might be. The whole of training yesterday was devised with a lot of work centering on little uh, Wise. In goes Young, there's Wise again, oh, cheekily getting it one side of Barnes, playing it the other, trying to play the long ball through towards Fashionu, but Hansen... It's Besson's ball. Hasn't missed a game for Wimbledon in seven years, an absolutely remarkable record by this big goalkeeper. There's the first of his long, long kicks, aimed not towards Fashionu, but towards... Uh, little Terry Gibson. Ablett. Given away. Gibson finding fashion here. His shot hits straight at Robert Art. Ian St. John. <laughs> well, Bruce is a bit annoyed at Gary Ablett. Uh, the youngster got caught there with John Fashion here. And uh, I suppose he was wanting just to settle down a little bit, Ablett, there and get a feel of the ball. But uh, Wimbledon were on to him like a flash. And. Uh, you know, you just can't afford to do that, it's particularly at this stage in the game when it's all getting a little bit frenetic. It's uh, a throw to Wimbledon. They've won only one of their last 11 games, but they've drawn six of them. I think maybe with no hope of getting up into, uh, obviously, a, a high place in the table, although they finished seventh. And I think they were very much, their minds were on Wembley, and maybe their form suffered a little bit particularly fashion news, in fact, scored only once in the last 11 games. And I think there was just that little fear amongst the Wimbledon camp that maybe you know, if you do lose that touch because you are not giving it your best shot, it's very hard to uh, get it back on the day when you really want it. That's little uh, Terry Phelan. Ten months ago, he was uh, with a fourth division club, Swansea City. And a big rise for him. And another long, long kick. We're going to see plenty of those this afternoon as Beardsley gets it back. 
And the nice thing about it all, it's a final really, I think, where even if you're uncommitted sitting at home, you can take sides because if you favour class and style and fantastic technique, then of course Liverpool's your side. And if you fancy underdogs who battle away, most times with a smile on their face, well, then Wimbledon's your side. Alan Hansen is cool as ever. Over the years, there have not been many better servants of a football club than he. Well, let's see what Vinny Jones can do with this long, long throw. He'll aim towards Eric Young, who's gone up there. Barnes gets it away, and Liverpool not into their stride yet. Uh, Jones getting it in again. That time it was Spackman. Good year. Well, he took a little too long, and Aldridge uh, robbed him. Spackman playing it for Beardsley. Liverpool on the break now, with three up on this side, including Aldridge, including Nicol, who's come up fast from the back as well. Still with Beardsley, but the shot charged down by Vinnie Jones. It comes to Barnes. It's a good cross by him. And whether Aldridge got the touch, or whether it was Vinnie Jones, the ball has gone behind. It's a goal kick. For the moment, they looked a real serious threat on the Liverpool goal. It came off a Liverpool player. Goal kick, quite right. Dave Bassett, former Wimbledon manager, any early thoughts about the way your old side are playing? Well, it's settled down quite well, actually. And uh, they're obviously like, looking to get Fashionu in the channels as much as possible. Well, it was Fashionu with the touch there. Laurie Sanchez. Sanchez again. He would came off uh, Steve Nicholl. Alan Cork trying to get in there. It comes to Dennis Wise. That's a foul, that's a free kick. A foul by McMahon, and the ball came back and uh, splattered McMahon in the face. And he's going to need some treatment from Roy Evans. That was a very unfortunate ricochet for Liverpool. But it clearly was a free kick, as uh, little Dennis Wise is challenged unfairly there. Down he goes. And let's see what Wimbledon can come up with here, with about six minutes of the game gone. McMahon in trouble. And who knows, maybe Liverpool could be. I think the free kicks and long throws and corners are going to be important today, how Liverpool defend them against Wimbledon, Brian. Well, McMahon back in the fray. Let's see. Wise is behind it, Sanchez is behind it, Finney Jones is behind it, Fashionu is making some movement in the wall. Important early break this, it's Wise with the shot. They've settled really well. I thought the first 20 minutes might be the difficult uh, period for them, but as you say, Brian, they seem to be reasonably well relaxed. I think really, in a way, it's a tribute to uh, Dave Bassett, that Bobby Gould was saying that when he arrived there in the summer, that was a bad kick, that he found uh, an inner spirit among the players which he'd never experienced before. It really is an all-for-one and one-for-all situation. Fabulous team spirit and a side that never knows when it's beaten. Well, a nice little touch there. Fashionu playing it on to Gibson, who's offside. Seven and a half minutes gone. Liverpool nil, Wimbledon nil. If you just joined us on this beautiful afternoon here, almost from high summer at Wembley. Temperature into the 80s. Thorn. Cork. Gibson always likely to be out jumped by Gillespie. Bobby Gould on the bench, you can just see leaning forward there, alongside him, John Howe. Developing into a very good combination for, in terms of management at Wimbledon. And it's the fifth FA Cup final for Don Howe, the other four, of course, when he was involved with Arsenal.
free kick to Liverpool. Steve Nicol with it. Thorn yeah, shoving in on the back of Aldridge, and the referee at the perfect angle to see it. Free kick to Liverpool. Atman. Oh, that was a nasty challenge by Vinnie Jones. And the first free kick given against him. He really set about McMahon there, and right under the eyes of the referee. And he will not want to be giving too many free kicks like that away. Always liked to do that, of course, Ian St. John. Well, that's correct, and uh, I mean, everybody, everybody's sitting here waiting for it. And that's the first opportunity that he's had to, to challenge for a ball that McMahon had. And he just flew in there, he was always going to be late, but uh, that, that might spark McMahon off and, you know, maybe get the confrontation that we didn't want. Gillespie. Nickel. Houghton trying to pick it up. A little dummy by Beardsley wasn't bought though by Andy Thorne. Quick word from you, Dave Bassett, about that Vinnie Jones uh, tackle. Well, I thought he went in quick. You know, I didn't think it was quite as late as Ian thought, to be quite honest. Pass from you. There's the man's power, but the tenacity of Steve Nicholl. Providing Wimbledon with their first corner. And for that, we get big Eric Young up from the back. And Andy Thorne as well. The two central defenders in there. Fashionu and Sanchez, another six-footer in there. Plenty of height now for Wimbledon. As Wise plays it in, and you'll get another chance. In both the games up at Anfield, Wimbledon has scored uh, from corners against uh, Liverpool. And uh, Eric Young, I think, scored in the game just before the end of the season. This season it was a 1-1 at Plough Lane, and Liverpool won 2-1 at Anfield. They've always been close between these two clubs. Adam Cork trying to get in, and very nearly did so. Eric Young playing it back for Vinnie Jones. OK. Yeah, Liverpool don't handle corner kicks too well. David, you're quite right about that. And uh, I think it's the, the worrying factor, giving away corner kicks and three kicks against this team, who actually work very hard at it, don't they? The, the set plays are very good. That's right. I mean, you can see from the long throws that Eric Young is coming up, they're going to sort of throw in as many high balls on those situations as, as much as possible. Double last free kick. Good header by Goodyear. Ablett letting it go. A throw to Liverpool. Just past the 10 minute mark, still nil nil. John Barnes. Handsome to Gillespie. Gillespie, who missed the uh, final two years ago with a stomach upset on the day of the game. And must, after that awful crash with Smackburn, have wondered whether it was going to be an unlucky one again this year. But he's there. And so too is Ray Hatton. Beardsley coming off his man nicely. Houghton continued the run, it wasn't picked up, but Besant saved it well. But Wimbledon caught a little bit in defence there by the quick thinking of Beardsley and Houghton. A good play, wasn't it? You know, nice little ball by Peter Beardsley and Ray Houghton with outside of his foot trying to bend it away from uh, Big Besant. Gillespie up well to stem the tide again. Young. And now McMahon. Again, quickening that pace a little bit. Finding Nicol. Cork in the way of the pass. Wimbledon's ball off Steve Nicol. In actual fact, Ray Houghton always seems to have quite a good game against Wimbledon when he was at Oxford, Brian. He used to pick up the ball and run and cause a few problems. Nickel beating Fashionu that time. Spackman. Phelan planting it forward again. Gillespie's there. Going to be a lot of work for those heads in defence. Well, he's headed the ball a couple of times, but he's never headed it with his forehead as yet. He's bobbed two, two headers straight up in the air, you know, off the top of his head. I think instinctively you pull away from it if you've got cuts and I mean his stitches are not out yet Wise got his cross in towards Cork 
He wins balls in the air, Alan Cork, that you sometimes think would be beyond him. And Ablett was right beside him, but the 29-year-old got up well again. I think Liverpool have this fear about Cork and Fashionu in the air, as we were saying a bit earlier. When it comes, up goes Cork, a well-timed jump, but wide of Grovelar's goal. It's interesting, Dennis Wise is playing a lot deeper today. Now Houghton, but Thorn is there. I think that may be, uh, Dave, to offset the threat of John Barnes, do you That's think? That's correct, yes, yeah. It's just it may restrict him getting forward at the right times as well, though, for Wimbledon's point of view. Andy Thorne with the header for Wimbledon. There's Vinnie Jones, and McMahon was after him, but Jones delivered just before McMahon arrived. That will be a confrontation we have to watch very closely, I think, this afternoon. Now Barnes. Here's McMahon in a bit of space, and I don't think Jones will get to him this time. McMahon's on his way, but the shot is well wide. the temptation is to be out and about on such a glorious day but if you've now come in and uh, are going to join us I think we're going to have quite a cup final here with a quarter of an hour gone Liverpool nil, Wimbledon nil free kick to uh, Liverpool Gillespie with the kick Wise versus Ablett, and it's Larry Ablett, here's John Barnes. No nonsense about that, it'll uh, be a Liverpool throw. Looks like Liverpool are trying to get Ablett isolated on their free kicks with Dennis Wise. Uh. Beardsley. Be a throw to Wimbledon. Uh, Clive Goodyear going across. Lad who was with Luton and with Plymouth. And had that hairline fracture of the leg in March. It's quite remarkable that he's playing this afternoon. But I noticed that one of the Wimbledon substitutes is John Scales, who is also a fullback. Whether they are just worried about whether Clive Goodyear is totally fit, I don't know. Well, in the meantime, look, here's the goalkeeper. What, 30 yards outside his penalty area? <laughs> With the free kick. Up towards Fashion, who wins it in the air. Gibson backing in on his man. Gibson shots. But there was an infringement there as Gibson was backing in on Gillespie. But also very noticeable how Fashion who won that ball in the air really quite comfortably. Well, he's, an, e he's an excellent leaper, Brian. He's, uh, that's one of his strengths, John. If he's uh, on good form, he's, he can be very strong in the air. Robillard's long kick. Young stumbled for a moment. Beardsley. Who shot taken with waspish power but it was way off the target get the feeling Ian that Liverpool just can't at the moment quite get into their stride well they haven't got their first gear uh, to tell you the truth uh, it's been the quietest start to a Liverpool match that I've seen all season uh, they don't appear to to have got it together there's a lack of urgency about them but whether you know they just say we'll, we'll settle in you know for 20 minutes and see how the game goes and then we'll, we'll try and step up a bit that would appear to be the case Fashioner winning in the air, Wise planting it on, Nickel getting it back. Just interesting, Ian, it looked like for uh, in the early seconds that they were going to try and play out from the back and then Ablett made the error and perhaps that's cost them a bit of confidence. Uh. Yes, could be right. Now Barnes taking on Goodyear. He's got Beardsley waiting in the middle and Eric Young was there as well for Wimbledon. And they get their first corner now. Gillespie up from the back. 
Played back here for McMahon. Barnes. Should be Besant, and it is. Good catch. And a throw that is just a little too firm for Phelan. Nickel. And into that hole, and Nichols played the ball to Beardsley, but Sanchez who did a good covering job there with his fullback well forward and out of that position. Boris Sanchez played so much of his early days at Reading. McMahon to Barnes. Barnes now to Nickel. It's me. They're off the target again. Great stage for all these players, really. The match being beamed right around the world to so many countries live. Good control there by Gillespie. Phelan's challenge on uh, Houghton was a rash one, a free kick. Play on. Aldrich. Beardsley. Just deflected away. A little wise will get there first. But here's Nigel Spackman. And now for John Barnes. Faced by Goodyear. No, it's over. I would think if Liverpool could get the ball to Barnes a little bit more often and let them attack the fullback. They, they may get some joy out of it. I don't know what you think, Dave. I, I, I see that as an area that Liverpool could, uh, could cause some damage. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Wimbledon and Don must be concerned because he's obviously restricting Dennis Wise's job there. I think sometimes when Barnes comes into that left half, inside left spot, he causes more problems than when he's actually out on the wing, where he starts running at the centre of the defence. There's Ablett. Wise is getting up there now and really getting stuck in, unfairly so, because he's conceded the free kick. Well, it's given Wimbledon's way. Must have been a foul on. Uh, little Dennis Wise. Up comes Eric Young. Two, four, six blue shirts now in that Liverpool penalty area. Gibson almost got there first. Young almost got in there. Sanchez tried the shot, the whistle had gone. Now, Steve McMahon is that busy arguing with, uh, with Vinnie Jones there that he didn't even see the ball getting played into the box. And, uh, you know, Liverpool are certainly losing the concentration here. Well, it was interesting, Ian. Uh, Alan Court was wandering around the outside just watching and made a very late move. He's very, very good at that type of thing, and people are not marking him. This time it's a Liverpool free kick. It'll be uh, Ray Houghton. Aldridge made a little run, but it's Beardsley the man, played on there. It was Sanchez who got a header in, Vinnie Jones who played it back, Alan Thorne who plays, Andy Thorne who plays it uh, forward. That was a bit of movement, and a bit of passing first time. McMahon finding Barnes. McMahon, Spackman. Here's Adlitz. Poor cross. Such a contrast between these two clubs with their record. Here we are, halfway through the first half. Here we are, the Liverpool in their eighth FA Cup final, Wimbledon in their first. Meantime, Liverpool, ten European finals, eight League Cup finals, 14 Charity Shields. Six League Cups. Wimbledon's only uh, real Wembley experience 25 years ago when they won the FA Amateur Cup against Sutton United 4-2.
Mind you, I don't know whether you remember, David, they had a big centre-forward called Eddie Reynolds. I saw the game, remember, he scored all four goals with his head. You've got a big uh, centre-forward up there today, John Fashionu. He'd be happy with four. <laughs> Aldridge winning it. Oh, good year. He's made a mistake, and he was saved by Bessant. Well, his heart would have been a flutter there just for a moment. It was uh, a clumsy-ish back pass. Fashionu winning it again. Cork in there too. It seems that Liverpool have decided on Besson's long kicks to defend deep, which is not a bad idea. Yes, but Wimbledon are getting all the touches, aren't they? Tyson is getting all the, the first yeah. touches there. Although it seems that one or two are going straight through to Bruce. And yeah. The other interesting fact, when Besson's taking goal kicks, Fashionu seems to be coming deeper in the centre circle. It looks like they're trying to, to win as much ball there. Well, it's Wimbledon's throw. Phelan finding Andy Thorne, an England under-21 player. Back to Dave Besson. Jones. Beardsley. That's more like Beardsley. Fun pass for Thorne and Phelan, but now he's faced by the pair of them again. But the ball might come to Houghton. And is it there? No, it's not. Incredible. Vinnie Jones puts it away. It looks as though Aldridge must score. It looked as though Barnes might be there to finish it off, and somehow or other, Wimbledon survived. A marvellous run by Ray Houghton in the first place to cut it back. Aldridge got that. I thought John Barnes was going to dive and head it, but the goalkeeper got it first. Tremendous pressure now by Liverpool. It's the first genuine piece of Liverpool class that we've seen. It very nearly produced a goal. will take this corner. Gillespie's making a run towards the near post, but it was Sanchez who got it away as far as McMahon. That's a Wimbledon ball. Liverpool beat Stoke, Aston Villa, Everton, Manchester City and Forest getting here and conceded only one goal in that cup run. That was against Forest in the semi-finals. Wimbledon beating West Brom, Mansfield, Newcastle, Watford and in the semi-final, Luton. Nickel. Virtually won't keep it in. Just a little bit of crowd cover now, and I notice that there's a little bit of breeze showing on one or two of the flags around the stadium. Maybe it's just pulled off just a fraction out there. Good strong running by Fashionu, but a goal kick to Liverpool. So you can see there is a little bit of breeze, at least at that height. But whether that's applying Ian down on the pitch is another matter, I suppose. Well, I'm just looking at the corner flags and they're limp, so uh, <laughs> I don't think the, the wind ever gets down onto the pitch. A delightful ball for Nickel. Getting support from Spackman. Jones versus Houghton. The ball beats them both. Wimbledon's goal kick.
Fashionu winning it above McMahon in the air. Alan Cork beaten in the end by Gillespie. Barnes potting it through for Aldridge, who's fouled by Sanchez. Laurie Sanchez. Northern Ireland international. He had a really nasty touch of flu earlier in the week. In fact, there's been a little bit of flu in the Wimbledon camp. Uh, Eric Young was complaining to me yesterday about it. And uh, Dennis Wise also said that he got a really nasty sore throat. The last thing you want in uh, cup final week. Beardsley. That's Bessence. There's another massive Besant kick. That time, Fashion, who didn't get on the end of it. Good year. This cross coming in towards Alan Court, but Nicol had read that well for Liverpool. Jones versus McMahon. Ablett versus Wise. Liverpool coming away with it, finding Houghton. Beardsley's got his head down and is after this one again. Young is there with him. Still nil-nil. Into the side netting. So, half an hour gone. Liverpool nil, Wimbledon nil. Bobby Gould saying yesterday, we're great party spoilers. Well, Liverpool just haven't got going as yet. They've been frustrated by the vigour of Wimbledon's play. Sanchez header finding Dennis Wise. In turn, he can't find Fashionu. Jones trying to get it forward. Fashionu had strayed offside and hadn't got back on. I think Houghton in the uh, midfield looks to be a key man for Liverpool at the moment. A terrific little player. Scored, of course, here, didn't he, when he played for Oxford against Queen's Park Rangers in the uh, Littlewoods Cup a couple of uh, seasons ago. Yeah, he's a very good little player, and uh, I, I do think uh, between him and Beers, they're really the liveliest of the Liverpool players this afternoon. Cork winning it in the air, but Barnes finding Ablett. McMahon. Little. Quickly inside. Here's Houghton again. Barnes. Little. Spackman. It might be a little too hard. Roger Spackman. Never scored for Liverpool since his arrival from Chelsea middle of last season. Sanchez to Cork. Now Wise on the far side, an amazing amount of space allowed for him to cross it back in once more, and Fashionu just wide. Well, the amount of space the Liverpool defence allowed Wimbledon on that far side and little Dennis Wise was so unlike Liverpool. And Fashionu nearly punished him for it. There's Wise's cross coming in, and there's Fashionu. Well, that was no more than six inches wide. It's the first time Wimbledon have been in it for a little while, Brian. I feel they're being a little bit apprehensive. They could could get to look to get forward a bit more. Fashionu seems to be playing a bit deeper than uh, normal. The voice of Dave Bassett, if you just joined us, former Wimbledon manager, now manager of Sheffield United. Hanson's header, Phelan beating uh, 
Houghton, but jumping on the back of him as he did so, it'll be a free kick to Liverpool. I mean, that was interesting. Fashion, who was challenging with McMahon in midfield, and uh, Hanson heads it clear. I'd have thought he'd have been better up challenging Hanson. Well, that's a good free kick. And Beardsley's on his way! And has put Liverpool! Oh! There's an infringement there. The whistle have already oh. gone for the free kick. Well, well that, that won't be the most popular decision in Liverpool. Well, certainly it's not, it's not a popular decision in this stadium because surely he got clear. I know he was pulled back, but he got clear. He's gone through a one-on-one -on -one in the goalkeeper and surely the referee had to play advantage there. Well, the advantage was not played and Wimbledon breathe again. Beardsley perfection one against one. But still nil-nil. But let's see what Barnes can do with this free kick. Plenty in the wall. Besant will want a view of it. Might need a view of it. Barnes with a free kick, curling in amongst the photographers. Way, way wide of the goal. And the boos go up again for the referee. They wanted him to play an advantage there. He was too quick on the whistle. Disappointment on the Liverpool bench and certainly amongst their fans. But sheer unadulterated relief for Wimbledon. The ref must have blown immediately. It would have been better just to wait a second. Uh, as I said, I think Brian's a good referee. It's just one of those incidents that uh, should have been punished. Thorne gets it back. Sanchez. Phelan linking up. Just about the first time he's got as forward as that. And gets a free kick. The foul by Nickel on him. Nickel in turn claiming there was an elbow from Terry Phelan. But it'll be uh, Dennis Wise who takes the free kick. Again, uh, Young is right in there. Sanchez in there too. I don't have to tell you the fashion is in there. Here's Wise with the free kick. And it's in there! Well, Sanchez has put Wimbledon ahead! Only his fifth goal of the season. And the underdogs remarkably have gone into the lead. You saw the header there, and there's the ball in the back of the Liverpool net. It wasn't even a particularly high ball. Fine, you know, but he got, he got in front of the Liverpool defenders to score. But that's the thing that, that people from Liverpool have felt, you know, all week they said that we could lose a goal from free kicks or corner kicks, and that's happened. Well, and that came a matter of uh, three minutes or so after a controversy at the other end when Liverpool felt that they should have had a goal allowed. But the scoreboard gleaming at the moment, Liverpool nil, Wimbledon one. Fashionu down injured. What about a word from the former Wimbledon manager, Dave Bassett, now? What about it, David? Well, it shows uh, how often in football, like, one chance and then you go up the other end and score. But, again, it showed that Liverpool's vulnerability on defending free kicks and corners. I mean, their marking was appalling in the box. And if you mark like that, you deserve to get punished. What about Laurie Sanchez's scoring ability, though? And there's Bobby Gould. That's a tremendous breakthrough for his side, the Wimbledon manager. Well, they'll be very relieved after escaping what, when they could have been one down. They're one up now. Um, yeah, Laurie gets into the box. There's people like Alan Cork, and as I say, you've got to do your homework on marking them up at free kicks. Here we are again, David. Yeah, it's a well-floated ball in on the goal. And Gary Ablett's just done there. He's on the wrong side of him. And in the meantime, a free kick at the other end for Liverpool. Steve Nicholl with it, and it's a deep one. Ablett on the far side. And in fact, it was the header by Fashionu that had to be saved by Besant. Gibson. Wise. Court trying to get in there. Looking really lively at the moment, Wimbledon. Thorne 
beating Aldridge, taking on all comers, but McMahon then obstructing him, and it's a free kick to Wimbledon. Well, are we going to see one of the greatest turn-ups in FA Cup final history? A long, long way to go yet, but we're still uh, six minutes to half-time. Thorne with the free kick. Cox getting in there. It's Grobelar's ball. Liverpool have lost this season only to Everton and to Nottingham Forest. About down here, Beardsley. Stopped by uh, Jones. McMahon. Barnes. Tiny Nickel. Dink in there towards Aldrich. They play on the penalty. The referee spreads his arms wide. No penalty. Five minutes of the first half left. Laurie Sanchez's goal after 36 minutes. Getting Wimbledon the lead. And here comes Dave Besson again. Benny Jones. This is Grobelar's ball. Oh, he's lost it to Gibson. Goal kick, no foul on the referee. Grobelar furious, but that's to no avail. He lost the ball, Gibson found it, and could so easily have found the net to make it two. I couldn't believe that Brucey coming all that way for the ball in the first place, but I, do, I don't think that uh, Gibson fouled him at all. I think he just played the ball against Gibson as he was running in. Liverpool are all over the place at the moment. Phelan. Back to Besant. Four minutes of the first half left. Speckman. Ablett. Barnes. Hansen. Gillespie. Now there are a few red shirts up there. Houghton amongst them, a ball from Gillespie for Houghton. Played across the face of the goal and into the arms of Besant from the boots of Young. Aldrich steaming in there. And Liverpool almost creating the equaliser there. Lovely ball by Gillespie. Played in first time off the defender, Eric Young, but into Besson's arms. Cork now at the other end, trying to get the ball inside the fullback for Wise. Go kick. Spackman going forward. Barnes. That's a free kick. A foul by Sanchez. Two minutes of the first half left. Liverpool seeking that equaliser before the break. Barnes and Ablett on the free kick. Gillespie up from the back. It was Thorne's header, helped on by Sanchez, helped on by Little Gibson, and Ablett backpedalling for Liverpool. Hansen.
Nickel. Right across the face of that goal, there were a few flying boots at it, but it came off Goodyear in the end for another Liverpool throw, pushing Wimbledon back. With a minute to go to half-time, everybody except Grovel are well inside the Wimbledon half. McMahon, Hansen, played for Houghton, and Hansen coming through! Against the legs of Besant. Only well, scored one goal this season, Alan Hansen, but that could have been uh, a most timely number two. Eventually coming off the legs of the big Wimbledon goalkeeper. That'll be a goal kick. Well, Liverpool haven't had as much of the play as they would normally have, I don't think, Brian, but they've still created one or two, you know, goal-scoring situations. That one there by Alan Hansen uh, was just another. But they don't appear to be getting the run of the ball today. You know, sometimes it happens for you, the ball hits the goalkeeper when on a good day it slips under his body and it doesn't seem to be happening for Liverpool. And it's up to Wimbledon now to take advantage of that. Sanchez, Gibson's after it. An injury time, injury time at the end of the first half. Nothing much going uh, Liverpool's way. They had what they thought was a goal. Well, I mean, it wasn't, uh, wasn't disallowed because the whistle had gone in, uh, instead of an advantage being played. Uh, within minutes of that, they're a goal behind. Then they feel they should have had a penalty. Then they hit the ball against the goalkeeper's leg. And now they've got a throw given against them when they should have thought uh, they thought it was theirs. But you have to live with these things. And there goes the half-time whistle. And in many ways, a remarkable first half because the four-to-one outsiders are leading by a goal to nil. The goal scorer Laurie Sanchez after 36 minutes, noticeable too, that Ray Houghton, I think, wanted to have a word with the referee. Bruce Grovelar spotted that very quickly and got in between Houghton and the officials. So there's no point in arguing with the referees. All we've got to do now, uh, Liverpool, is to get to that dressing room and sort a few things out. And all Wimbledon will want to do is to get there and assess that first half and make sure they have more of the same in the second. Half-time score then here at Wembley. Liverpool nil, Wimbledon one. Thank you, Elton. Well, the managerial skills of Kenny Dalglish, where everything has gone so brilliantly for them over the last two or three years, have been put to the test in the last ten minutes. Brian Hill, a figure of some controversy in that first half when Peter Beardsley was pulled back. He said at half-time, incidentally, that he realised that he was wrong, but that's one of those things he had already blown. kicked by Dave Besant with football romance in the air once more with the underdogs leading by a goal to nil here at Wembley and it's been of late a great place for underdogs remember Coventry weren't given that much of a chance last year against Spurs and they won it and Luton Town of course against Arsenal So nothing a little Reading coming here and beating Luton in the Simod Cup earlier this year 4-1 it's been a funny old year or two for Wembley Cup Finals. And who knows, little Wimbledon might be writing another chapter this afternoon. Larry Sanchez. Caught on the far side. A great old warrior he's been. Uh, playing in all four divisions of the Football League, Alan Court, but losing out now as Steve Nichol tries to get it away. And that was a long ball played back by Sanchez. And Young using, it seemed to me, an elbow on Beardsley to get the advantage on the England international, but he got it back to Dave Besant. And Phelan just getting it back to Besant as well, as Liverpool look as though they're trying to turn the wick up a little bit, speed up the game and their own desire and enthusiasm with it. But there was a foul on the Wimbledon goalkeeper, Ian St John. Well, if I was feeling a keep away from Besant at the moment, he's very angry with him, isn't he? on a long ball forward, up goes Gillespie and beats Fashionu in the air. It comes to Alan Court. Offside against Fashionu. 
the interesting part in the first half, Brian, is that uh, in free play, Liverpool, yes, they're doing well, but when it comes to defending free kicks and attacking free kicks, Wimbledon are far more organised. Wise taking it up again for Wimbledon, playing down this right-hand side. Vinnie Jones finding Clive Goodyear, the cross coming in, it's Gillespie's ball. But here's Sanchez, trying to get Cork away on that far side. Good heading ability, Jones might get there first against Hansen, but Hansen just nicked it away. And now Hansen for Liverpool, he's got Beardsley and Aldridge ahead of him. Houghton very lively too, Beardsley. to Barnes, you can probably hear a lot of shouting on the pitch, a lot of anxious players out there, Barnes stopped in the end by Phelan at the expense of a corner to Liverpool Barnes popping up on the right wing Brian there and possibly at half time they said to him he's got to come more into the game because he's been shot out of it on that left hand side Gillespie's up there, Beardsley's in there Houghton's in there it was Thorne who quietly is having quite a substantial game at the back there for Wimbledon. A foul on Wise. Cheerful little character who uh, got a free transfer from Southampton. Andy Thorne has had a good game at the back alongside Eric Young. Another long Besson kick, aimed once more and finding Fashionu. And Fashionu again, it's time for Wise. Quark's on the far side, Nicol had to get that header in. Fashionu played for Phelan. McMahon, Houghton, busy stride of his, the languid stride of John Barnes. Beardsley. Nickel, Beardsley again. Cork, feeling the fullback. Gillespie there with it, losing touch. It's a throw. No, it's not. The ball stayed in. McMahon. Challenged by Gibson, the referee spotted it, the game went on. Barnes. McMahon. Houghton. Looks to be a little more purpose about Liverpool, even though they've lost out there to Alan Cork. Finney Jones, a long, aimless ball, that one. And Bruce Gobbler outside his penalty area. Spackman. Barnes, a lot of space here for Ablett. I fancy there'll be a lot of defending for Wimbledon to do in this second half to hold on to this precious one-goal lead. Here's Houghton. Ablett. Nicole. Long-range shot, straight at the keeper. Dave Bassett, the former Wimbledon manager, you were telling me at half-time that Liverpool have always been a little nervous of, uh, of Wimbledon. Yeah, all the games I've always felt that they've never really relished playing Wimbledon and they certainly don't seem to play their normal style. But having said that, you know, Wimbledon compete for every ball and uh, I think in some games at uh, Liverpool playing, they don't have that every week. I think it may be talent-wise the Liverpool side the best, but I don't think it's necessarily the best at hustling and pressurising Liverpool teams. Well, certainly not as strong as other teams of the past. Uh... Yeah. You could, if it comes to a battle, they'd go out and win the battle, you know. And I think that's, you're right enough, I think uh, the Wimbledon boys are battling away and, and probably just getting more of the game because of it. Yes. On with the free kick. Ablett got the header in. Vinny Jones got one in as well. Nicol and then McMahon. Just the Wimbledon boys seem to be picking up a lot more loose balls than the uh, Liverpool players as well. They look the like they're Liverpool. looking for interceptions and that type of thing. Kenny Dalglish and the uh, backroom staff off the bench there as Sanchez just kicked that ball away to waste a little bit of time. Now as Aldridge got in behind them, there was no foul by Phelan. Aldridge kept possession and now has got Beardsley. 
And in the end, no nonsense, no frills there from Clive Goodyear, but he hasn't got the ball out of play. Aldridge playing it now for Nickel, played in there to the feet of Besant. Good influence. You always fancy Dave Besant is on the whole side around him. I think that they bought him for something like a thousand pounds from Edgware Town. That's right. These days of enormous transfers, what an investment that is. Did you buy him, David? Uh, no, when Dario was manager, uh, we bought him. It was at that particular time. Brian Hall, the Oval manager, actually found him for us. Well, there are two Liverpool substitutes warming up. Craig Johnston and Jan Mulby. With seven and a half minutes of the second half gone, Wimbledon leading by one goal to nil. John Barnes for Liverpool in the red strip. Fashionu getting the better of uh, Spackman. Vinnie Jones may not have the pace, hasn't got the pace. Beardsley working hard, but a little dummy actually. Sold on in there by uh, Young. And here's Dave Besant again. He's a smashing character. And the ball going straight to uh, Wise, but that should be uh, Grobelars. There's another character for you. His throw out finding Houghton. Barnes. Thorne. No foul, no handball. I think Liverpool thought there was a handball there by Andy Thorne. Houghton getting it back from Nickel. Still Liverpool playing it around, seeking a way through this. Very impressive wall of Wimbledon blue to search out that equaliser. Barnes away on the left here. It's with Ablett at the moment, though. And then inside again to McMahon. Nickel. The team still separated by Lloris Sanchez's goal after 36 minutes, but here's Beardsley. Stopped again by Thorne. Good passing here by Liverpool, a lot of skill, but again getting no profit from it as the ball comes off uh, Big Alan Cork. Beardsley, the back heel, comes off Spackman, and there's Alan Cork again. But into touch it goes. For Liverpool's uh, possession there, Brian, they're not really getting round the back or behind Wimbledon at all. They're playing in front of them, which will suit them. Beardsley. Stopped again by Thorne. I've been really impressed by his performance today. Ian St John. That's had an excellent game. Uh, Peter Beardsley's trying to wriggle his way through, and at times, you know, possibly there are other players here around him that he may try and win two with, but he, he's trying to do a, too much, I think, solo. And there's Thorne. Big Thorne, Big Thorne yeah. has got him in his back pocket at the moment. Only 21. You picked, it on, uh, you picked him up, did you, uh, David? Yeah, we had him as, as a schoolboy. In actual fact, we ummed and whether we took him. And we, we took him on a YTS at the time when there was apprentices. Um, and he's matured. He's done very well. He's a very intelligent player. Well, Houghton getting behind them. And a good piece of work again by Besant. And the substitution will shortly be made. They're going to bring on Laurie Cunningham. And I think it might be Alan Cork who comes off. Laurie Cunningham. Substitution is now going to be made. Alan Cork, great old warrior, now in his testimonial year. He's got a testimonial on Monday, in fact, at Plough Lane. If Wimbledon can win this today, my goodness, it will be an all-ticket occasion, that one. Yeah, it'll be a uh, great occasion for him. Totally deserves it. Playing a John Hollings London 11 at uh, Plough Lane on Monday. Laurie Cunningham now, 32 years old and a lot of experience, stretching from West Bromwich Albion and Manchester United and Real Madrid. Getting his first touch now. Not a particularly successful one, but he's got support from Phelan. Help! Help! 
Gillespie. Upman. Upman. Got the better of uh, Vinny Jones there, but not the better of Sanchez. Gibson trying to feed it through for Fashionu. Thorne again. Cunningham. So the thing at, at the game at the moment, Ryan, uh, Liverpool are stringing passes together and are beginning to look a bit more cohesive this second half. But Wimbledon, I mean, I can't remember them playing three passes, David. Really, you know, they're just getting it and knocking it away. Yeah, I mean, they're playing as if there's only ten minutes to go. Vinnie Jones had a long, hopeful ball just a few seconds ago. They've got to try and get hold of the ball more now because otherwise you're looking to last too long. Well, it's Liverpool in possession again with McMahon. And now it's with Barnes and McMahon again. And here's Ablett. Blue shirts are back again in numbers. Barnes. Ablett. It's McMahon. Nichols made a little break down the right. It's Spackman now, though. Houghton being uh, pressed by Young. Cork, who's just been substituted. Laurie Cunningham's on for him. John Barnes, a long, deep cross, too deep for anybody in a red shirt. Laurie Cunningham picks it up now for Wimbledon. Well, the linesman had his flag up, I think, for an infringement, not that the ball was out of play, and then put it down again. Well, that's debatable, Brian. I mean, was it an infringement? It looked to me as if they, from here everybody thought the ball had just run over the line. The linesman put his flag up. And the referee said, play on. And play on they did. And it's a throw for Wimbledon. <laughs> Feeling slow. Fashion is high. The Lions went flag. And a free kick to Liverpool. <laughs> Good picture. Which shows a good spirit, Gillespie and uh, Terry Gibson. Terry Gillespie at six foot two, and uh, Terry Gibson, the smallest man on the field, at five foot five. Well, straight to little Dennis Wise, trying to get Fashionu away. Jones. Let's hit towards Grobelar. Beardsley. Speckman's gone forward from midfield. Barnes, who as yet has not really asserted himself. 15 minutes of the second half gone. Wimbledon still leading by a goal to nil. Well, I think Liverpool should make a, a substitution, Brian, because uh, it's not happening for them at all, especially up front. And I think uh, Kenny will need to think about shaking the pack up a bit. I think Craig Johnson's shortly to come on, but it's with Aldridge at the moment. That's a penalty. The foul by Goodyear on Aldridge. And Wimbledon hounding the referee. I must say the first look I had it, it looked the penalty. And here's Aldridge coming through. Goodyear after him. Well, I don't think that was a penalty well, hit at all. all. I thought it was a very good tackle. I had been saying to Dave, funnily enough, at half-time, if Liverpool could get the ball in and around the box, they may even get a penalty kick. But to get it that way, when really, uh, that wasn't a foul. Very, very harsh. Goodyear came in, played the ball. I must say, the second look at it, it looks a really tough decision. But what it does, it gives Aldridge, who scored 11 times from the penalty spot this season in his 29, the chance to bring Liverpool level. Saved brilliantly by Bessant. Amazing. There's only ever been one penalty missed in FA Cup final history, and you have to go back to 1913 for that. And now in 1988, there's another one. What an astonishing moment that is. And maybe it really is going Wimbledon's way. An inspired piece of keeping by Dave Besson, the man who cost a thousand pounds from Edgware Town. And who knows? 
it might well win the cup for little for uh, Wimbledon. I was just thinking, you know, that Kenny Dalglish had, had kept Aldridge on for the moment, and he's never missed penalty. I don't think he's ever missed a penalty kick. Can't recall it. And uh, so when that happened, I thought, oh, the luck's maybe changing, but uh, tremendous save by Big Dave Besson. Barnes. That man's after it. Besson taking no chances right outside the box. This is turning into quite a dramatic afternoon now. But Liverpool are still at Wimbledon's throat. But it's still Wimbledon leading by a goal to nil, and it's a free kick for, for uh, Liverpool. He's got a good record of saving penalties, Besson, over the years, uh, Brian. He does well. Well, never better than a moment ago. No, when you need one like that, that's the day to pull it out. Well, here's Abrick for Liverpool. On stopped by Wise. That's a foul. That's a free kick given against Ablett. Yeah, you have to go back to 1913, believe it or not, for the last penalty miss in an FA Cup final. A gentleman called Charlie Wallace playing for Aston Villa against Sunderland. How did he, how did he miss that one, Brian? <laughs> and uh, two substitutes are now being uh, made. Craig Johnston is coming on for Liverpool with John Aldridge, poor John Aldridge, he's had a brilliant season coming in for Ian Rush, 29 goals in it, and done all that Liverpool asked, except that he missed a penalty, and now has no chance to redeem himself, and Phelan, uh, or rather, uh, Scales is coming on, and he's on in place of little Terry Gibson. Remembering also, of course, we had a missed penalty in the Littlewoods Cup final. Nigel Winterburn for uh, Arsenal against Luton. Another free kick to Liverpool. The hero of the moment, the Wimbledon captain, Dave Besant. No time at the moment to rest on any laurels because... Liverpool are coming for them again with this free kick and Steve Nicol floated towards Hansen but he's back in the right place again Eric Young just over 25 minutes of this 1988 cup final to go it's interesting Liverpool have kept the two men with the headbands back in the, in the centre circle there and Spackman and Gillespie so obviously they didn't fancy heading the ball and here's Barnes and overhead, and again, Dave Besant is there. Really was a terrific penalty save, you know, wasn't it? Superb. I mean, he's such a big fellow that when he falls sideways, you know, he's covered half the goal. Gillespie. Spackman. Jan Mulby now warming up for Liverpool. Sanchez to Wise. Trying to get Scales. And Besant, wacky little touch. Dave Bassett, just tell me, uh, with Scales now playing up front, he's, I mean, he's normally a fullback, isn't he? That's right, he's a fullback. I mean, there must be something wrong with Terry from his injury the other night at Manchester United, which means that uh, they've just got to put him there. Good challenge, an important one there, played back, and Besant just getting there before Houghton. I think it was Vinnie Jones who played that one back, but uh, oh, there was certainly no margin for error there. Laurie Cunningham. They may have weathered the storm for a few moments, Wimbledon, and they've got to try and keep the ball a bit more now. I wouldn't bank on it, Dave. Gillespie. Bobby Gould's been saying all week he's got a side here that never knows when it's beaten, but uh, the same could certainly apply for Liverpool. Oh, yes. Nickel then with the throw for Liverpool.
Well, certainly at this stage, Ian St John, you would say this is one of the least effective performances that Liverpool have put up all season. I must, I, I'm disappointed looking at them today because I know how well they've played this year, and this is well below par for, for Liverpool. But all credit to Wimbledon, leading by one goal to nil, coming up to the halfway mark in the second half. There you can see it. Coming up to 22 and a half minutes, Laurie Sanchez, the scorer, after 36. The rank outsiders are leading at Wembley. But can they keep that lead against what most people now regard as the most powerful side in Europe? Hansen. Barnes. Nicole. Beardsley challenged unfairly by Thorne. And the free kick already taken. And again, McMahon. Ablitz. Oh, some space here now. But Houghton could not play it back into the path of Barnes. But you get the impression that Liverpool are beginning to open up one or two gaps now. Ablitz. Play for Barnes. Kenny Jones. Shakes off the challenge of Barnes. Is challenged by Ablett. Liverpool gain possession again and keep that ball in the Wimbledon half. McMahon. Wimbledon have pulled everybody, even John Fashion will be back now. Craig Johnston the substitute. Stopped by a combination of Jones and Wise. And here comes big John Fashion. Down. The old legs will be feeling the strain now, and the lungs as well. And the sun is out gloriously now, once again, with a temperature you can be sure down there into the 80s. Nickel. Gillespie. Barnes. Beardsley. Barnes again. We were just saying, uh, Dave and I, that uh, John Barnes hasn't lit the stadium up the way everybody thought he would. I mean, I, I certainly felt that he would be the, the man of the match, you know, pre match, because he's got so much talent. And But I think the way that Wimbledon have played today and closed them down on that side of the field has worked ever so well and uh, they've just shot them right out of the match. Foul on Scales by Nicol, a free kick to Wimbledon. They won't hurry taking it, they're looking for a breather, looking to take a few seconds off the burden that remains. 20 minutes are left. Kenny Jones, it will come for Ablett, Eric Young was up there and he needs to get back, suddenly uh, Liverpool in full flight, John Barnes, across that goal and nobody in a red shirt to deliver the final touch. Liverpool had so many red jerseys in midfield there when John Barnes made the break, nobody getting up there to support in the box, a good run by Barnes, it, he got that space because a little wise had gone off to the other side of the field. But in the main, you know, he's been blocked out. But you'll see here when he takes the defenders on. This is what we, we thought he'd be doing all afternoon. Threw the ball in there. And as you can see, that you know, there's only two red jerseys there. There'll be another red jersey coming on very shortly because Jan Mulby is now stripped off.
can see him down the tunnel there. Yes, he's uh, coming on, and Nigel Spackman is coming off. So one midfielder goes, and a very talented Danish international, Jan Moldy, comes on. Wise again, ball out of play. He's done extremely well, Dennis Wise, today. He's blocked Barnes out most of the game. Now, Craig Johnston. Yeah, I think at this stage, if you were choosing a man of the match in St John, which I know has been your task once or twice, it might be a little bit difficult. Well, I think Dave Besson would be the man of the match for me. That's, a, that's if the score stays uh, at 1 0. I mean, if somebody gets a hat trick in the next 10 minutes for Liverpool, I might give it to them. Hansen. Barnes. Oh, a lovely ball by Barnes, and it was. Well, it wasn't luck for Wimbledon because that was what. Uh, Big centre back Eric Young meant, but that little touch on his head just took it beyond uh, the on running Liverpool player and on for Dave Pleasant. Interesting to know who faces the more exhausting uh, last quarter of an hour actually Wimbledon because of the way they play, or Liverpool because really they've got to the point now Ian, where they're chasing the game a bit. I'd like to be in Wimbledon's shoes, hanging on to a goal rather than trying to get 2 to win it. It's with Wise for Wimbledon. Minutes are ticking away. Yeah. And there's a good header by Fashionu. The first real jump we've seen from the big man with a head on goal. Former Bernardo boy, who's done so many good things for Wimbledon since he arrived from Millwall. And again, it's Wise, Don Howe saying that. About 75% of Wimbledon's goals come from that little man in one way or another. Now he's got to get back because Barnes has taken this pass from McMahon. There's a deep cross towards Craig Johnson on the far side, too high for him. It looked like a handball there by uh, Houghton, and indeed it was. And it's a free kick to Wimbledon. Consternation on the face of Kenny Dalgleish and Don Howe in uh, the centre of the picture there. He and Bobby Gould have done such a job here. And in Scotland, it's Celtic 1, Dundee United 1, the latest score, McAvenny and Gallagher the scorers. Here it's 1-0 to the underdogs Wimbledon, and an offside against Craig Johnston. To the annoyance of Peter Beardsley, who'd uh, taken up a good position and was prepared to put his head down and run after that, and Beardsley is giving Craig Johnston some stick. For goodness sake, use your head, he was saying, kept touching his head. And there's plenty of shouting going on from the Liverpool bench. The first feeling of anxiety, I would have thought, beginning now to make its presence felt on that bench. Here's Dave Bessant. Crowd love that. Only like the Liverpool players do when he comes out. No. <laughs> Hanson, just look at the hustling that's going on there with Fashionu. He's such a fit young man. But uh, conceding the free kick there. Fashionable, 25 years old. Now Beardsley. Johnston. Mulby. That's a delightful ball. Houghton with that busy stride of his. Uh, look to the outside to Beardsley. A little chip by him. He tried to get it back to Houghton. Laurie Cunningham's header getting it away. McMahon taking it forward again for Liverpool, and McMahon prepared to go all the way, and in the end, Goodyear had to take it into his own hands. Besson came out, and I'm not sure that Besson would have got there, and certainly Goodyear couldn't risk the back pass in those circumstances, but it's a corner for Liverpool with 14 minutes of the game left. Liverpool nil, Wimbledon 1. Here's Jan Morby. Crossed in, and Fashini back there. A Liverpool throw, turning the screws just that little bit tighter, Liverpool now. Mulby once more. Can Wimbledon hold on to this fantastic one-goal lead? Craig Johnston going round. 
and still going round and in the end uh, put behind by Thorne what a week for Craig Johnston having uh, let that bombshell go in the week to say that he was packing up football and going back to live in Australia but Kenny Dalgleish has stuck with him on the substitutes bench there's the corner fisted not very far and <laughs> well Besson didn't get much of a punch on it but he kept his feet and grabbed it and standing six foot four as he does, he's always got a fair chance of getting it before he can get to anybody else. Well, for a former Wimbledon manager, nervy moments these, Dave Bassett? Well, they seem to be coping quite well. Um, no, I meant for you. Oh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, naturally. Sanchez. Vinnie Jones. Oh, goodness, they've battled well, Wimbledon. And now they need to battle for only about another 13 minutes to bring off one of the shock results in FA Cup final history. And yet you say that, Wimbledon, in fact, finished seventh in the first division, so by no manner of means are they mugs. It is just that I think Liverpool have been so supreme for so long this season that everybody, or so many people, <laughs> felt that it was a foregone conclusion. But it's not... And Wimbledon still leading 1-0. Throw given uh, Liverpool's way. Barnes trying to get Beardsley away. Young is right back there with him. Beardsley might take a bit of stopping. He's looked for Mulby, but Scales just got in there first for Wimbledon. Hansen. Mulby. Beardsley. Stopped by Fashionu. And those long legs, got it away, Fashion who's down, whether he's hurt himself, I don't know. But Wimbledon have got both their subs on. A little wise, getting it into touch, and Fashion is still down. Scored in four of the five rounds of the FA Cup, so he's had a big influence on Wimbledon getting here, as good Fashion who now Ablett. Crosses there, Barnes just couldn't readjust himself sufficiently to uh, get a shot or a header on target. Ian? Well, I think Liverpool now are looking for something out of the ordinary because uh, it looks to me as if it's going to be one of those days. You know, they've had enough of the ball in certain areas of the field without really playing as well as they can do, but still had chances, but they've never had the run of the ball in the box. And uh, haven't really tested Big Dave apart from the, the penalty kick. 11 minutes left. Nickel. Here come Liverpool again. Thorne. Good defending again by him. Up towards Fashion Rue. It was Gillespie who won it in the air though. Nickel. Challenged though by Sanchez and beaten by him. And suddenly Wimbledon on the break here. The ball, a short one here for Fashion Rue. Cunningham, feeling outside him, Laurie Cunningham, they're looking for a little bit of magic maybe from him, but the cross comes in, it's headed away quite comfortably by Gillespie, Sanchez, who's covered a lot of ground, to Vinnie Jones, played wide for little Dennis Wise, can he take on Ablett and beat him, he's having a go, has he got a corner, yes he has, corner for Wimbledon, ten minutes left, Little Wise, only 21 years old, five foot six, scored the winner in the semi-final against Luton. Now with this corner for Wimbledon, Fashionu and Young are both in there. Scales is in there too. Young with the shot and Grobola grabbing it out of the air. Again, it shows Brian how difficult where Liverpool struggle in defending corners. Indeed, and young shot eventually held by the Liverpool keeper. Nine minutes left. I've got the feeling it's so nip and tuck now that I will, if I can, count off minute by minute to you as we get towards the crescendo. Craig Johnson on the far side, here come Liverpool again. Out of play. It's a Wimbledon throw.
Our ball, says Kenny Dalgleish. But linesman is indeed agreeing. It is a Liverpool ball. Eight minutes left, Fashionu back. Now it's a Wimbledon ball. Eight minutes that will seem like a lifetime to Bobby Gould and all the uh, Wimbledon the players and their fans. The average crowd is only 8,300. Cunningham. Back heel, giving Fashion Lewis some space. Molby. A foul on Jan Molby by Lois Sanchez. And a free kick to Liverpool. Building something from deep in the shape of their skipper Alan Hansen. Everybody predicted that he would be the first captain to go up the steps. Here he is, the number six, to receive the cup and the double, as it were, for the second time. It's never been done before. But Wimbledon have got some work to do in the last seven minutes now, if that's going to happen. Here's Craig Johnston. Barnes playing it on for Johnston. The cross comes in comfortably again for Besant. And it remains one of those afternoons for Liverpool. Scales trying to get in. Nickel. Hansen. Now six minutes left on the clock. Mulby, Barnes, Mulby. Fashionu trying to get up enough steam to hold the Liverpool substitute and in the end almost manages it. Everybody trying to get a tackle in, it comes to Scales and now to Vinnie Jones and now for, for uh, Phelan with Cunningham outside him. And Cunningham has dropped back, hasn't pushed too many forward but now Cunningham has taken that ball from Phelan and a good one it was. Beardsley stops him, and Liverpool now look to build something again from their own half. Again, it's Jan Mulby. Coming up now to five minutes of the game left. A good challenge that time by Fashionu. Vinnie Jones finding Laurie Cunningham. It comes for Beardsley. Now, is this going to be the lucky break for Liverpool? No, it's not, because Barnes goes flying. And Phelan gets it back to the Wimbledon hero, Dave Besant. Now, is he going to be the first ever goalkeeper captain to go up and receive the FA Cup? Well, in a little over four and a half minutes, we shall know. Gillespie, again a header, not hit with the forehead, but with the top of the head. Phelan underneath this one. Feeling going on, stopped by Gillespie, needs to get back, and the Wimbledon bench furious with that because that's an unnecessary risk that Phelan had taken. Goodyear thought about the back pass, thought against it, and whacks it forward again towards the substitute, John Scales. Turned inside, but a foul by him, Fashion who hits the ball well wide. Four minutes of this 1988 FA Cup final left, and Wimbledon just four minutes away from a most remarkable victory. A victory that a lot of critics were saying, well, they were saying if it's going to be for the good of British football, it's got to be Liverpool. But you try and tell that to anybody who comes from southwest London right now. And besides, you win a cup final if you're good enough to win it. I think that's the point, Brian. I mean, I certainly thought that Liverpool would win this handsomely. And, of course, it, it don't look as if they're going to do that, but you've got to hand it to Wimbledon. By Craig Johnston. No foul. See, Wimbledon have won all the challenges, all the tackles, 
all the headers. They've looked a more positive team without playing really an ounce of football. <laughs> because I don't think they've, they've strung half a dozen passes together all afternoon. But having said that, the part of the game that they're good at, they have done exceptionally well. Let me keep you up to date with the time. Just three minutes left now. Fashionu puts it into touch. Liverpool now look to retrieve something. Grobola with a mighty kick forward. Phelan, well, he's kept it in, but probably Craig Johnston's for his benefit. They've planted Gary Gillespie up there as a last desperate measure. Now Fashionu is in the clear. Well, at least he's got Scales up there alongside him, and he's got Wise here as well. Barnes trying to come back to get a possession for Liverpool. Good year. Now, no time to waste it. Forward it goes from uh, Bruce Grobelow again. He finds Beardsley and now McMahon. Oh! A nasty old challenge there between McMahon and uh, Finney Jones. But there's no time to debate it. The free kick's been given. It's been taken in. It's with Houghton. Lining up the shot, deflected away. Barnes now turning it in once more. And Eric Young, the hero for Wimbledon, with 90 seconds of the game remaining. Liverpool nil, Wimbledon one. Jan Mulvey with a long throw and a good throw. And a header that's just over. And only just from Stevie Nicol. They won't hurry to take the uh, goal kick. Dave Bessent. Now, what about Dave Bassett? What do you feel about it now, David? Well, it's a great moment for them, really. They've, they've battled and they've fought hard. I think they've wanted to win the cup more than Liverpool did. Well, there's one minute remaining on this FA Cup final. And for once, the Liverpool crowd, and they are massed right around this stadium. Remember, Wimbledon's gates are about 8,000. The Liverpool fans are fairly muted. But again, Grobola launches that long one. Gillespie finds Beardsley. In turn, he finds Barnes. The little chip comes in, but it comes off Goodyear. And again, they get it away, but it's given offside. The Wimbledon fans thought that was the final whistle, but it's not. On my watch, there's still 20 seconds to go. Barnes plays it in. Vinnie Jones gets it away. But it'll be a throw which Mulby will want to take, and we've already seen that he can throw a good long ball in. So it's not over yet. Can Wimbledon hold these last few seconds together? There's little feeling getting in there. Sanchez missed the kick. There is the final whistle. And Wimbledon, against all the odds, rank, rank outsiders. The hero is Dave Besson, their captain. Man who saved for the penalty spot. And the result they said could never happen, has happened. Football romance is in the air once more. And that old Wembley jinx, the underdogs, have come up with the goods. An astonishing result that few an hour and a half ago would have believed. And Liverpool players are sitting on the ground now, quite unable to believe what has happened. Kenny Dalglish comes on, disconsolate. Dave Besant, who clearly is going to be a big candidate for the man of the match. That's when he's got the cup, as the first goalkeeper ever to go up to receive it. What an astonishing afternoon. As I say, some will say, as the two goalkeepers have a word, and Alan Hansen, the two skippers, have a word. And it may not have been the prettiest final that Wembley has ever seen. But in many ways, it's been one of the most dramatic. Not least when Big Dave Besant saved that penalty from John Aldridge. But it looked as though Liverpool might well be in a situation to get back on. There's Don Howe embracing Big John Fashionu. 
It's been teamwork right the way through for Wimbledon, and teamwork has triumphed over everything else in this glorious sunshine in this famous old stadium. What a party they're going to have. I tell you, they've got the biggest marquee in Wimbledon, and that even allows for the All England Tennis Club on the Wimbledon pitch right now. And they're going back there tonight, and that party might well go on for, well, a couple of three days, I would think, except they've got to play a testimonial on uh, Monday night for Alan Court. Well, the yellow and blue ribbons have already been placed on the FA Cup. The long and the short of it, six foot four Dave Gossett and tiny Dennis Wise who never stopped running. This must be a great moment for Dave Besson. He's uh, had a brilliant game in catching. Well, it's uncharted territory as Wembley was starting at three o'clock for Wimbledon. And up the famous steps to receive the cup, that certainly is uncharted territory for them. A club that 11 years ago wasn't even in the Football League. That back in 1983 was back in the fourth division that here in 1988 are about to take the biggest cup prize of all, the FA Cup. They really are the pathfinders for every little club in the land with ambitions and with dreams. And today for Wimbledon, those dreams have come true. Dennis Wise. And Big Dave Besson lifts the cup for Wimbledon taking it from uh, Her Royal Highness, the Princess of Wales. What a fantastic afternoon for the little club. Pictures that are being seen right around the world, and people will look and they'll say, well, I don't know how it could have happened. It'll just be interesting to see the papers tomorrow. A few of them are going to have to eat their words, Brian. I think a lot of them will have to eat their words. I've just eaten mine. <laughs> Actually... You know, you talk, people talk about experts in the papers and your favourites writing this, that and the other. But I think on forum, David, you had to say that Liverpool would win the game because, I mean, they're the champions, they're the marvellous team. And uh, But in a cup final, like in any game, things can go wrong. And for Liverpool today, everything went wrong. That's and right. To miss a penalty as well, you know, that just was a final straw, wasn't it? It may well be that Wimbledon's name was on the cup and you had a bit of luck at the right time. But having said that, I always fancied them to do well against Liverpool. I don't think Liverpool battle when they have to. I think when they're in control, they do. And a few of their players must be well disappointed with their performances today. Well, they'll be disappointed as they come down the steps here with losers' medals. A team that has achieved so much and over the years has won so much when everybody thought that, well, it wasn't a formality, but at least you would if you were a betting man put a big bet on them. Well, it's gone down and Wimbledon have come up. John Aldridge at the back there, what a sad and sorrowful sight, really. But it was his missed penalty, and then he was substituted. John Barnes, who never really got into the game. Beardsley, who worked so hard, but really to no avail. The thing is this, Brian Liverpool have so many medals, they've been in the winning position so often, that I'm sure they don't uh, begrudge Wimbledon their little day in the sun this afternoon. Oh, and there might even be just uh, something in what Dave's saying that, that maybe Wimbledon wanted to win that little bit more. Well, they certainly battled for it and they, they certainly deserve it at the end of the day. I think it also shows something for Wimbledon's professionalism because they did their homework better on Liverpool than Liverpool did their homework on Wimbledon. They got Dennis Wise to do a particularly good job. They practised their free kicks and corners uh, at both ends of the park much better. And there's Don Howe with Dave Besson. You can be sure of one thing. Dave, uh, uh, Don, I think, is working without a contract at Plough Lane at the moment. But they're talking to him, and they will talk very earnestly to him to make sure that they tie him up with Bobby Gould. Oh, I'm sure they will. They want to keep Don. He's a good coach and a good man. So the Wimbledon players begin to celebrate. The Liverpool players are just trudging round behind that goal. It's an unusual experience for them. Their faithful fans who, let's face it, are some of the greatest fans in the country, are loyal to them and giving them a, a great round of applause. But the fans will know, and Liverpool themselves will know, that by their own high standards this season, they really haven't done themselves justice here at Wembley today. Just one point on that, Brian. I thought Kenny Dalgleish, uh, Roy Evans and uh, Ronnie Moran were very good. They went up to all the Wimbledon players and congratulated them, even in their disappointment. 
and it has been an afternoon played in a, a massively good spirit. There's Vinnie Jones in the middle there. People were predicting all sorts of battles going on in the midfield between he and Steve McMahon. There was one that I thought looked a pretty unpleasant tackle. Dave Bassett thought it wasn't as bad as that early on. But that apart, it's been played in the most glorious sporting spirit. And as I say, it'll give every little club in the land something to aim for. And they think, well, Wimbledon, way back in 11 years ago in the Southern League, have done it. Bobby Gould organising the team photograph. And I think maybe trying to get a few people out of the way who shouldn't be in it. But Dave Besson just wants to get on with it. Man handles his manager around the back. And in a way, that somehow exemplifies the whole spirit there's been in the Wimbledon Football Club. I think it might be quite a party, don't you, Ian? I, I don't think I'll be invited, but I'm sure it will be. It should be a cracker. And it is ever, as we keep saying, it, it is marvellous for them. It gives hope to all the other clubs in the country. If, if Wimbledon can come here and win against Liverpool at Wembley, then surely next year, let's hope that the First Division Championship race is going to be a bit tighter. Because I don't think enough teams played with the same spirit as Wimbledon in the league. And it allowed Liverpool to get that gap at the top and uh, really killed the league off from Christmas, didn't it? Well, Wimbledon certainly were never killed off here this afternoon. They started brightly, they competed well, they went ahead with that goal after 36 minutes with Laurie Sanchez from the corner. And you wondered whether they might wilt because Liverpool appeared to come out in a better frame of mind and more business-like early in the second half. Then they had the penalty. And, of course, a lot of Liverpool fans will look back before that Wimbledon goal and say, well, if the referee hadn't been quite as quick on the whistle and had played the advantage, we would have been ahead and then the whole story might have been so different. Well, they'll say that, of course they will, and, uh, and maybe quite rightly, but at the end of the day, that's only for argument's sake. Liverpool didn't play well enough on the day, really, to, to justify it. And to get a penalty kick with a dodgy decision, I thought, and then miss it, well, you can't turn around and say, we should have won the cup after doing that. Laps of honour here at Wembley are taking longer and longer because there are, what, 200 photographers there, I would think, who need to be satisfied. Just one more, please, just one more. This way, this way. You're going to say, Ian? I'm going to say, Ian, I have to put the floodlights on the time this one finishes. Alan Court, lovely for Alan, isn't it, you know, to, to finish his career, as it were. I know he's not exactly finished, but coming to the end of his career yeah. with a cup winner's medal. Well, I saw him quoted in the paper this week, actually, where he said he's been there 10 years, uh, Alan Court, and he said, I haven't a thing to show for it, no medals, no trophies, except, he said, I really enjoy coming into work every day. And I thought that was absolutely brilliant. Well, he's got something to show for it now, he's got a cup winner's medal, and what should be a fantastic testimonial on Monday. And I hope, incidentally, that Alan Hansen has a brilliant testimonial the same night up at Anfield against Bobby Robson's England Irving. I'm sure he will be. That'd be good for both players. So there we are. Thanks to Dave Bassett and to Ian St John. We're going to take a break now, and then we're going to talk, we hope, to one or two of the winners and one or two of the losers. Alan Cork, you say you enjoy going to work every day for the last 10 years at Wimbledon. You must have enjoyed your day's work here. I've had a right good day today. I got dragged off, though, breathing at my backside. But look, Harry, if you can see us, Harry, look. Never thought I'd have one of these in my life, so away we go, look. Still you shaking. How do you stand back and try and analyse that performance, Alan? I don't know, really. I'm going to wake up tomorrow and look at this again and think I've won a medal. Right. First time in life. Right. <laughs> yeah, the goalkeeper's just uh, just come in and gone straight out. Clive Goodyear, before we talk to the skipper, what about the penalty? Uh, one or two protests from you? Well, yeah, I thought I played the ball cleanly, actually. The ball, he overran the ball and managed to get a toe in, toe it away from him. That's all I can remember. So I was a bit disappointed, but the big fella did brilliant. Listen, I think you can see it here, and Dave will undoubtedly take a, a long view of it um, when he comes to save it, but it's coming up here and just... I think our lads and everybody agreed it might have been a bit harsh. He's the ball. He's got the ball, man. Disgrace, referee. Uh, he said he'd make me a hero one day. <laughs> That's the voice, voice of Dave Besson, goal, and uh, David, I think we're gonna, we might well be seeing the penalty save now, which um, <laughs> was reasonably important, wasn't it? Yeah, not bad. I never saw it. Never saw it. 
Oh. 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 Should have caught it. Should have caught it. Now, just, did he just decide to go that way? Had you worked he's, out to go before or what? He's tended to put a lot that way, but the goalkeepers normally move, and I tried not to move, so uh, maybe yeah, that put him off. It's a lie, isn't it? Yeah. It's a lie, isn't it? Yeah. I was going to put me out on it. <laughs> Listen, I've got, to, I've got just a small bottle here. Uh, it's the first of many, I think, tonight. You've been named a man of the match by, by Jimmy Greaves. Yeah! And... Uh, a little, or a rather, a large and a full Jeroboam that won't stay full for very long. Listen, David, just, you know, you're, all the boys are in here. It's moments after you've done it, but, uh, you know, when you sit back on Monday and, and you make a decision about what's happened here, just spell it out for us what you think you've achieved. We've took on the best in the country and we've beaten them. So, it must be close to second Stop best. <laughs> Yeah. Stopped them doing it. Yeah. We've won a medal, lads. Yeah. And we've, we've got the goal as well that uh, I know you lads won't really want to see, but... Uh, who scored the goal? Who, 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 who scored the goal? Laurie right. Sanchez. Sanchez. Yeah! yeah! Good in there. Not bad, Sanchez. Don't spend. Roommate. Did you? I mean, Alan, everybody wrote you boys off. They all wrote you boys yeah. off. Did, did any of you have any of those odds at four to one? No. Yeah, I, did. Yeah. I, I had 20 quid on us really? with the local bookmaker. Yeah. Quids in now, isn't he? Loads of money. Yeah. Loads of money. Let's bring John Fashnew up in here. Are you um, you're right? You didn't give yourself any hope at all? You're joking, well, as usual. So we thought we'd, you know, nobody gave us any hope. The critics, I mean, we get fed up reading about it every day in the paper, but it's nice. Mm. It's great for football. Yeah, as you said, Eric Young. Johnny Giles is watching, I'm sure. Yeah, Jeff Powell, they're all watching. They love us. But, I mean, when you read those papers this morning, was it just the final G up that you needed that everybody wrote you off? Well, as Fleet Street says, I can't read and none of us can read, so we just looked at the pictures. <laughs> and uh, you're all going to have a quiet night tonight, aren't you? Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, straight home. Straight home now. Yeah. No drinking, nothing. OK, lads, thanks for joining us. Thanks a lot. Testimonial. Oh, testimony on Monday. Oh, oh, sorry, yes, on Monday night, if you're still on air. 16th of May, everyone's down here for crying out loud. Billy. See the cup. You said nobody would turn up if, uh, if Wimbledon had lost. Oh, we're going to get 25,000 now and everything. Billy, Billy, how'd you feel now, son? <laughs> hey, 1-0.